There are two ways of doing good. One is to avoid doing things that are harmful. And the, the other is to go out of your way to do something especially nice for somebody. The first is basically a matter of virtue. The second is generosity. And it's interesting to note that when the Buddha teaches, he brings generosity up first. When he explains mundane right view, it starts with, there is what is given. In other words, the times we go out of our way to be helpful to other people, generous with other people, there's a value to that action. When he was going to explain the Four Noble Truths, and he wanted to prepare his listener, he would start out with generosity. And even though generosity is not mentioned in the Eightfold Path, it is mentioned as one of their precursors to the path. As the Buddha said, if you are stingy with material things, stingy with the Dharma, there's no way you're going to get into the jhanas. In no way, of course, you're going to get into nirvana. So it's good to reflect. In what ways do you go out of your way for other people? Of the forms of goodness, it's the one that can involve the most ingenuity. And this may be one of the reasons why the Buddha emphasizes it. You think of other people, what they might want, what they might lack, what they might need. Then you try to think of how you can provide it. That requires going out of yourself somewhat. I mean, the desire not to harm other people also requires that you think of their, their well-being, think of their feelings. But when you're generous, it requires a more active involvement. You start thinking, what do I have that I can share? What kind of, do I have that I can do without that would please other people if I gave it to them? Now, this doesn't have to be a material thing. It can be gift of your time, gift of your knowledge gift of your forgiveness. But it requires some ingenuity. And the more you get into being generous, the more you find that you enjoy this exercise of your ingenuity. I'm trying to think of an unexpected gift, something that would be especially appreciated because it was unexpected. And this is developing a good habit that's going to serve you in good stead as you meditate. Because as the Buddha said, when you're avoiding unskillful thoughts, that can mean either the mind is in concentration or simply that it's thinking things that are skillful, not based on sensuality, not based on ill will, not based on harmfulness. But it's not necessarily special. What makes it special is when you decide you're going to focus in on one thing, get the mind to stay there. Now, in some forms of concentration, there's not much ingenuity involved. You simply repeat a word over and over again and force the mind down, beat it down. But the way the Buddha teaches breath meditation requires that you think. As he says, you breathe in a way that gives rise to rapture, you breathe in a way that gives rise to pleasure. What kind of breathing would that be? We have a John Lee's recommendations, but his recommendations may not work for you right now. After all, everybody's relationship to their breath energy is going to be very different. And even for one person, things can change. So use a little imagination. Think about what kind of breathing would be good now. Think of that as a gift to yourself. And here again, you get the mind to settle down and it feels really good. And you could decide, well, that's, this is plenty good. But think about the Buddha. He had an imagination that told him there must be something better. 
What if there were something better? What if there were pleasure or well-being that wasn't fabricated at all? How would you find that? That requires strategizing. It requires thinking. Because you can't cause the unfabricated. But you've got to get the mind trained so that it's ready to sense it. It requires sensitizing the mind. And this is where practice and generosity can help you. Because when you're generous and you're trying to make it into a skill, you're trying to be sensitive to what other people need, what they might want. And when you get used to putting yourself in their shoes, then you can look back at your own needs, look at them from the outside, a new perspective. After all, that was what the Buddha was doing as he practiced. He'd be following a particular line of practice. He'd come up short. He'd have to step back and look at himself. Okay, what am I doing? What are my assumptions? How can I change them? He was going into uncharted territory. which required an active imagination. And the same with being generous. It requires an active imagination to figure out what another person might like. So think of generosity as practice for your meditation. Virtue, of course, has a role to play as well in teaching you. Certain things are just out of bounds. Think of the image of the quail wandering out of its ancestral territory. Well, when you're meditating, you've got to stay in your ancestral territory. But simply staying there is not going to be enough. You've got to keep asking yourself, what could be better than this? You get there, you settle in. Then first you Learn how to content yourself with whatever newfound concentration you found, and learn how to get there solidly. Don't be too much in a hurry. But there will have to come a point where you say, okay, this is still not quite as good as it could be. What could be better? What am I doing that's unnecessary? What can I drop? Step back. In the practice you've had in trying to think in the way other people might think, look at the world the way they might look at it, will give you new eyes for looking at what you're doing. And that perspective will show you things you wouldn't have seen otherwise. So these practices of goodness, virtue, and generosity are not just an alternative second best for people who don't really want to meditate. They're preparation for the meditation. That quality I mentioned this morning, Jai Bun, a meritorious heart, the one that's willing to go out of its way, go the extra mile. That's precisely what you need as you meditate. You can follow the instructions, and they can take you to a certain point. But then you have to use your ingenuity. How do I go beyond that? Think of a John Munn out in the forest. It was because he had exercised his imagination that he could think there must be something better than what he'd been taught before. There are twists and turns in the path that he might not have anticipated. But his ability to step back and use his imagination, look at himself from a new angle, that's what enabled him to see a lot of subtle things he would have missed otherwise. 
So think of generosity as a practice that develops your sensitivity, develops your subtlety. And develops that part of the mind that is willing to put itself out. And is not always staying in its comfort zone. And it'll have a good effect on your meditation. <laughs>